Hey nerds, Jess here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Q1 2024 email marketing updates that you need to be aware of to be ready for February 1st. We're not even like going a full month. You need, these are actionable tips you need to do right now if you are sending emails out. So stay tuned. Quick um, intro about me. So I'm the founder of Lean Nerds and we specialize in building lead attracting websites, SEO and tech solutions and team trainings just like this. So um, we are going in. So in this video, we're going to overview the February 2024 updates released by Google and Yahoo and also what is authentication for email. So special note for businesses that are still using at Gmail, Yahoo, et cetera, all the free um, emails, don't do that. You cannot move forward in business if you continue to do this. It's pretty simple to set up a domain name. And if you're trying to get money from people, you need to put money into your business. You need to invest in yourself. Again, eight, six dollars a month for a better email so that you can actually send to people and they take you seriously and you're, just, you're not going to just end up in the spam box every single time that you send an email. So next, um, the February 2024 Google and Yahoo updates, basically what they're saying is they want to make it a requirement to authenticate all emails that come in that are of uh, that are uh, business related. So that includes SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. And this will affect anybody that is sending to people that have an at Gmail or at Yahoo account. So in the release, they say bulk senders, but just from a business practices use, they, they didn't make it a requirement for, and they just keep, they're trying to reduce spam as much as possible. So if you are sending business emails from your domain, I recommend all business owners to do this just because it's gonna give you better deliverability. It's gonna make you get in the actual inbox and not get stuck into spam. And with this new release, if you have a, a spam rate of over 0.3%, which that's like three emails out of a thousand that you send, which for people that are buying email lists is very possible, um, that's gonna be really bad for you. So. You want to make sure that you're following these rules and that you have good sending uh, things <laughs> that you're that you're doing, that you have good practices, so that you reduce the spam rate and that you uh, make it easy to unsubscribe and you have a better quality list. So, what happens if you don't meet these requirements? Um, so, Google and Yahoo, best case are going to put your email into the junk. But more than likely, that's not what's gonna happen. The biggest reason why the, this is occurring is because Google and Yahoo, their servers are only so big. From our hardware standpoint, we are about as optimized as we can be. So right now, we're focused on the, on the software side. And Google and Yahoo are tired of holding people's junk and spam. So they are just denying it completely. And they're saying, hey, we're not gonna hold your junk here. We're just, you know, throwing it out into the wind. We're just gonna bounce it back um, so that we don't have to keep any of it here because a lot of people just make Yahoo and Gmails and all this stuff just to hold their spam, hold their old email. And if you are a user of Google or Yahoo, you'll know if you don't log into your account after a while, they'll just delete your email because again, they don't wanna hold your storage. A lot of us think that the internet is just in the cloud and it doesn't take up any space, but in reality, it is held somewhere. So we wanna make sure um, as, you know, from a technical standpoint, that we are being as efficient as possible because especially with all these AI softwares and things like that, the junk and spam is just getting outrageous. So these are the things that they're doing, these aggressive things to make sure that um, spam is less in the future. So it's great for users. It's bad for business owners that don't want to stay up with the times and stay current. So I wanna make sure that you are, because honestly, a lot of your competitors aren't going to be. So you can be a part of the group that is staying up to date and getting out of the spam box and is going into the inbox, or you can be just like your competitors and you know fall by the wayside come February 1st, you're not prepared and you're scrambling to try to figure out why, why are all my emails bouncing? Why is my email list not delivering at all anymore? So I wanna make sure that you are in that, that first class and actually reaching your audience because we already can't 
own our social media followers or anything like that. And it's been preached for, you know, if, if you've been a business owner for a while, you know how important an email list is. So it is even more important to make sure that that email list quality is the top of the line and that you don't lose that. Um, so also this would, uh, again, this could be a bounce response, which is really bad. Um, that's again, that best case scenario, you go to spam. Worst case, it's a bounce. And if your entire email list bounces, that's that's not good at all. Um, that can result in uh, permanent blocks of your IPs or domain names, which means if you're using your URL to send from to send emails from it and you aren't set up, or say you don't have your DMARC set up, which we're gonna get into the authentication methods. If you don't have that set up and, and a spammer sends on your behalf, and you don't have DMARC set up, that means that you're authorizing a spammer to spoof your email and say, hey, you can send to my users all you want because I don't have any protection, I don't have any gates. And if that happens, you may not even be sending to your email list. Uh, somebody else could be sending on your behalf, but you are gonna be the one that is gonna get that permanent block on your domain name. Um, so this is just, I'm, I'm just trying to prevent as much damage for great business owners that are watching this right now that want to make sure that this doesn't happen to them. And again, these are all things that you can do if you would like. We help with it, but it, I'm giving you all the tips on how you can do it for yourself, how to Google it, and how to get it done. So um, basically, this is what it looks like when you don't have authentication set up. So this is an example of somebody sending from MailChimp. It's going to send all of these extra like letters and numbers and things like that. This basically tells me that their domain name is not verified. And with this new update, you have to have a domain name verified. So how do you check this? I included a link for you right here, mxtoolbox.com slash email health. And from here, you can enter in your domain name and you can check your email health. Um, so I have examples of what a bad email health is and what good email health is. Um, you're, you're gonna see, even if you have great email health, you're still gonna see some warnings, some things you can't deal with, but what we want to look at, and I'm gonna just pull up my domain name uh, right here so that I can show you what you should look for. So then that way you can see, like, does this apply to me? Did my tech person set this up correctly? All that. Um, so. What's great about this also includes all the blacklists that you could possibly be on. So if you aren't being able, if your deliverability is bad, then this is some way that you can assess that and target like what needs to be improved. Um, so we're going to look at DMARC. We want to make sure that your DMARC is all checked and we want to make sure that um, your SPF is all checked. And... Um, after that, you're you're all good to go. If you have all those checks, then you're you're set for the update, and you got nothing to worry about. All right. So I just want to talk about what is SPF, DKIM, and DMARC because, in my opinion, the more that we understand what these things are, the more that um, the lingo and things like that are. You know, it's it's easier to run a business if you understand what other people are talking about. So. Authentication for email is, again, only possible through yourdomain.com. So for us, that's leadnerds.io. We've got what the cable. We've got, you know, all kinds of emails or all kinds of domain names. And you just need to replace yourdomainname.com with your domain name. And this applies to you. So SPF is like a name on your driver's license. Technically, people can have multiple SPFs that are the same. And that's why we have the DKIM, which is a specific number set that is specific to your account. This checks and makes sure that it's not been tampered with so that, again, like I was talking about before, if a spammer tries to spoof your email and send on your behalf, if they don't have, if you don't have this DKIM, if they don't have their DKIM that they're trying to send through set up in your server because they wouldn't, because you didn't authorize them to, then you have a DMARC set up that tells basically the server whether or not you want to um, reject or quarantine or none the email and say, hey, like, I want them to, you know, get quarantined. I want to see where the server, where, who is trying to spoof my email or it rejects it and it just bounces it for them. And then you don't even have to worry about it reaching 
the uh, your your email list or just random people that they bought that they're trying to act like um, you basically it's identity theft in a way. So an example of what verification looks like for Mailchimp, you're going to go to your settings, manage domains, verify your domain name. You're going to go uh, get a code through your email once you enter this in. And then you're going to be able to authenticate your email, which is going to give you um, some DKIM and SPF uh, records. So this is specifically for Mailchimp. If you're using Act Active Campaign, Go High Level, any of those kinds of things, literally anywhere that you're sending emails from, and that includes Outlook, uh, G Suite, everything. What you want to do is you want to search whatever that email sender that you're sending from is, and then SPF DKM. That way you can set up. So yeah, G Suite um, DKM SPF setup. That way you can find um, what it is the actual steps are for you. There's over a hundred different types of, you know, CRMs, emails, etc. So I can't go through every single one, but this is what you would be looking for. Okay. And in GoDaddy, when you add a record, because oh, um, these are the records that you're going to be adding to, you know, GoDaddy or DNA, wherever your domain name um, records are held, this is what you're going to update. You're going to click add and you're going to um, add the record according to the instructions that were um, in your CRM specifically. So again, it's really hard because there's so many different types, um, but I'm just trying to give you an overview so that you have the information that you, you need to know to go out and do it for yourself. So DMARC, the final one, um, basic DMARC record, it needs to be set. Again, we have SPF, DKIM, everybody's already known about this, but DMARC is something that most people don't have set up normally. Like all the accounts that we've seen, they don't have DMARC set up because this isn't something that was, you know, an actual like deliverability thing before. It was more of like security. But um, again, Google and Yahoo are requiring this. So this is how you would set up, set it up. So in that area where you would add a record, you would then add the TXT, the DMARC, and then the content. At the very least, it's set to none. Once you have all of your DKM and SPF set up, then you're going to want to, I, I recommend make it reject because again, what that says is if anybody tries to send using a software that you have not authenticated because you have not put an SPF or DKIM verification code in your, in your DNS settings, you're saying, I don't authenticate this, reject it. It's not my problem. That way they can't send on your behalf. Google sees it and it's like, Hey, there isn't a DKIM SPF set up for this. We're going to, you know, block this domain name. You want to make sure that this is set up again for your safety. Even if you're not sending emails, if there is a possibility, if there's a chance that somebody could find your email and use it to spam other people, you want to make sure this is set up because if this is set up, it's going to stop that from happening. This is something that probably is going to be standard in the next couple of months, maybe next year, but I see a, a likely chance that um, people are going to be able to take advantage of this and I just want to make sure that you are protected and it's so easy to do. This is going to take you like 10 minutes. You know, if you can't figure it out, again, this is something that we can help you with, but um, you have to have this set up. So again, this is what it looks like for the common user. This is the main reason why we wanted SPF and DKIM set up before. Before all of this Google, Yahoo making these requirements, this was something that improved your del deliverability rates. So this is something you should have had done, but it wasn't. Now it's a requirement and we're going to be able to change your email from looking like this to just regular. It just looks like it just sent from your from your regular email and it's just you you can see the difference of how how much nicer that looks um when it is just authenticated verified and sent correctly so again go to mx toolbox slash email health so that you can check and make sure that you don't have these x's if you do have x's 
get them checked out. Um, if you would like us to do this for you, we, depending on when you see this video, we may be booked out. I know it's been a very busy week this week, but if you would like us to check everything and make sure it's accurate, add any records if needed, if you need us to help verify any CRMs, softwares, emails, etc., if you need a second look at this, um, for $150, we will look at it, we will assess it, we will provide any recommendations, and we will add all of the records needed, um, up to 10, for... It, you know, if you're sending from more than 10 different emails, you know, we, we have to have a limit. Um, per domain name, we will do this. And this is up until February 1st, uh, 2024. So I've left a link. You can also scan this and it'll take you to our Stripe, which is going to ask you for what domain name that you want verified and then contact information so that we can get you uh, onboarded and set up. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out and I'd be more than happy to help. Have a great day. Bye.